Hi, I'm Steve Mignanti and I'm here in El Paso, Texas, where we're going to take a look at the new MSD Atomic Electronic Fuel Injection System. It's basically a wet flow throttle body that replaces most any square bore carburetor. Now, if you're one of those guys with a muscle car, a hot rod, or a street rod, who doesn't think you can step up to fuel injection because it's too complex or too expensive, this is going to change all of that. The beauty of this is that it bolts down in the place of any square bore four barrel carburetor, use your existing manifold, and it gives you the complete benefits of electronic fuel injection, which includes better drivability, faster startups, cleaner idling, and potentially more horsepower. This system has eight wires that connect it to your car, and you can use your pre-existing fuel line in most applications. Let's have a closer look at these parts. The heart of the unit is the four barrel throttle body. Nice thing about that is that the ECU is integrally assembled onto the side of it. Uh, it's not remote located, it's all right here in a very compact and tidy assembly. Inside of this, of course, we have the MAP sensor, the throttle position sensor, and the air inlet temperature sensor. So those are things that come pre-assembled, you don't have to tune them, you don't even have to look at them. The fuel rails are integral, so there's no chance for leaks, and this is something you just bolt down in place of any pre-existing square flange carburetor. Any OE style muscle car air cleaner will drop right down over this. There's no interference problems, and that's a nice detail. You can keep your factory air cleaner if you choose to. While many of these aftermarket systems require the use of a laptop computer and some skills, not so with the Atomic EFI. This is the power module, and this plugs into the unit and basically provides the ability through this handheld controller to set the system up for engine size, camshaft type, compression, cylinder count. All those things are done right here with the handheld controller. The unit does all the adjusting for you once you enter the basic information. And unlike a lot of fuel injection systems that require a return line and some pretty complex plumbing underneath the car, the Atomic comes with high pressure fuel line and a special PWM fuel pump. You might wonder what does that mean? Well, that means pulse width modulated. The pump functions like a strobe light. Basically, instead of having full flow all the time and requiring a circuit to return the fuel back to the tank, this is only triggered to pump fuel when the computer tells it to do so. So as a result, you don't have to have a return line. It makes life so easy. Other items that come standard in every kit are a pre and post fuel filter. These are essential to make sure that the gasoline is as clean as can be when it gets to the injectors. And a wideband O2 sensor, which reads rich or lean conditions and corrects them immediately for the best drivability. Now that we're familiar with the MSD Atomic EFI system, let's install it on a car. This is a 64 Chevelle with a 300 horsepower 350. Let's get started. We're going to start our work under the car. Now since we have access to this two post lift, we're going to use it. But if you're at home using a floor jack and jack stands and a creeper, you can do this job. Just make sure you support the car evenly, chalk the wheels, and work safely. The only part of the entire installation that requires welding is installing the O2 sensor. It'll go into either header or exhaust head pipe, and what you gotta do is find a place that's nice and flat, about six to eight inches away from where the tubes merge. We can see it right here. Uh, some headers have this already installed, but in case they don't, the kit comes with a bung that you can weld in. Some important things to keep in mind about this is you never wanna install the O2 sensor in an exhaust system that has any kind of a leak upstream. It'll send false readings of fuel air mixture. So again, no header leaks upstream of the O2 sensor. And also, if you're gonna mount this to a, a curve, make sure that you're on the inside of the curve, never on the outside because again you get a leaner mixture and inaccurate readings on the outside of any kind of a curved exhaust pipe and most of all make sure you install it so that it's not going to hang too low or interfere with other parts of the car. Mounting the fuel pump is easy but does require a little bit of planning. That's because electric fuel pumps are born to push fluid not pull it. So what we want to do is make sure we mount the electric pump in a place where it's near the bottom of the gas tank not up higher. That way it doesn't have to pull fluid. It can push it for best performance. On our Chevelle we find that inside of the frame rail right here is an ideal location to tuck the pump up inside of there. But a couple things I want to point out is once it's in there access to these ground and hot studs is not that easy. So what we did is on the bench made a ground wire and attach it to the negative side of the, uh, the power source right here. That way once it's up there we can ground it right there and have best access to the fasteners. The live wire will be outside, we'll be able to hook that up no problem. Another detail remember is that all electric fuel pumps have an arrow on them indicating the flow of the fuel. If you mount this backwards it won't run very well so you want to make sure to pay attention to the fuel flow arrow and make sure you're headed toward the front of the car. And finally I love that these are real simple because you don't have to go scrounging for AN fittings or metric stuff. These take a 3 8 barb, you push the hose on them, put a clamp on it, and it couldn't be simpler. We do have to drill a couple of quarter inch holes into the frame of the car to mount the brackets. Now the nice thing here is that these come with the kit and they have a nice rubber insulator on them so that the buzzing of the pump is isolated from the car. 
Now that we've installed the electric fuel pump, it's time to mount the fuel filter. Now there's going to be a filter ahead of the pump, which is very important because you want to make sure that no grit, nothing from your tank gets forward and into those injectors. But there's also a filter after the pump. We're going to mount that now. Now there's no real magic as to where this goes. We just want to make sure it's away from sources of heat and vibration and contact with moving parts. But on this Chevelle, we can put it right here ahead of the pump and uh, have a nice clean installation. With the fuel filter in place, I'm about ready to tighten it down with these, these clamps. But before I do that, let me point something out. Your car may be equipped with hose clamps that look like this or like this. Don't use them. That's because they're meant for carbureted fuel systems which run maybe 6 or 7 PSI. The EFI on this car will go 30 to 70 PSI, so we want to be sure to use the clamps that are included in the kit. And these are EFI specific hose clamps that do a much better job of clamping the hose to the fitting. Again, make sure you use these on your system. With the fuel pump and secondary fuel filter safely located inside of the frame rail, now we turn our attention to the gas tank and the back of the car. Now this is a place where I want to take a moment to enjoy the fact that on this returnless system, we don't have to modify the fuel sending unit to accept a return line. That's just a lot of effort and on this kit, we don't have to do it. I love that. So what we'll do is get into the fuel line here, remove this filter, and replace it. We do that by removing this filter here. In fact, this is located in a really nice spot. We can reuse this location, but we'll put the fresh filter in. It comes with the kit, and why not use it? And naturally, this is a good time to remind uh, you that you don't want to do this with a full tank of gas. Certainly drain the tank down to almost empty. That way you won't have a mess on your hands. On this particular install, we're not going to be using the steel fuel line. We're going to leave the line and cap it off for future generations. Now the thing is, we're going to actually take our rubber fuel line. There are 15 feet of it included in every kit. It's 3 8 high pressure, high quality line. We're going to use the existing steel line to piggyback on. We're going to actually run our rubber line to the front of the car using the stock routing. It will keep us away from harm. The power module is the controller for the high draw items like the electric fuel pump, the cooling fans, and the O2 sensor. Now, this can be mounted anywhere on the car. If you've got a restored muscle car and you want to hide your EFI system, you can. This can go all the way inside of the car, like in the glove compartment, with extensions that are available from MSD. It does not cause any kind of radio frequency, so it won't interrupt your radio. But in our case, we're going to go under the hood. Now, here you have a couple of options. The inner fender is a classic place to put this, but in our case, we're going to mount it to the firewall. Fixing the unit to the firewall is as simple as using self-tapping screws. Okay, now that the power module is fastened to the firewall, we can think about the wiring harness. Now the kit comes with a, a wiring harness with a very long series of pigtails on it. And what these do is they run things like the electric fuel pump, the cooling fans, and the O2 sensor. There are also some options for a speed trigger in case you have a drive shaft speed sensor and other things, air conditioning as well. We're going to go for the basics on this and just basically run our cooling fans, the electric fuel pump, and the O2 sensor. It starts by plugging it in. Next up, we're going to be running these wires in such a way that they don't make contact with any hot spots or moving parts. Well, the stage is set and our Chevelle is almost ready to jump into the 21st century. Yes, the carburetor is coming off and the fuel injection is going on. But let's have a quick look at the MSD Atomic EFI throttle body. The thing that's beautiful about this is it's modular design. It's very, very sanitary to look at. There's not a lot of external components like the MAP sensor, the TPS sensor. They're all built in, as are the fuel injectors, which are feeding each of the Venturi from the corners. Again, it's self-contained, sanitary, and really easy to look at. Beyond that, it requires less wiring, has a single fuel line, it has a crossover fuel rail, roller bearings for the, for the throttle blade shafts, and an integrated fuel pressure sensor. Another cool feature are the annular discharge rings. They're made from precision machine aluminum, and they do an excellent job of atomizing the fuel so that you get maximum power and drivability. Well, now it's time to take that carburetor off. The MSD throttle cable bracket is universal. It will accept all four GM and Chrysler kick downs, throttle cables, and throttle rods. But what we want to do is the parts that were on our carburetor that we worked with before, we're transferring onto the throttle body so that they work once again here. Again, very simple. Swap the parts from the carburetor onto the fuel injection unit, and you'll be good to go. Like all EFI systems, we have to have information for the computer on engine temperature. And the best place to get that is the engine coolant temperature. So we have a sending unit that we're threading into the cylinder head right here. We're going to wire it up, and we want to make sure that the wire doesn't get into contact with anything hot that could melt it. With the throttle body bolted to the engine, now we can attach the wires to the system. Those connections include battery positive, battery negative, 
switch 12 volt, which is going to be the positive side of the coil, and also a trigger from the distributor to the fuel injection unit to tell the injectors when to run. That's a simple wire on our MSD, ready to run distributor. Under the car, we have to connect the electric fuel pump, the O2 sensor, and that totals eight wires. But remember, there are some optional connections, which include the ability to run two cooling fans and also to connect a drive shaft speed sensor. And finally, if we choose to, we can also trigger a kick up for the AC in the event that the AC turns on we can actually compensate the idle speed for that so basically it's an AC kick up sensor so again eight wires to get her running it couldn't be simpler connecting the gas tank to the fuel injection unit is really easy again we've already drawn our 3 8 rubber fuel line from the back to the front of the car remember we want to avoid pinch points and heat sources and we're going to plug this right in but at this second I do want to reiterate how nice it is not to have to have a return line for this fuel injection system the thing with return lines is that the gasoline makes a circuit from the front to the back of the car continually. It picks up heat in the engine compartment and believe it or not, fuel temperature can increase by 50 degrees. That leads to evaporation and gas is expensive enough, we don't need it evaporating. Now the MSD throttle body does come with an AN fitting, it's a dash six, but in our case, because we're going to use the rubber, we're going to use the included barbed fitting. We're just going to plug a rubber line right onto that. We want to be sure we use an EFI specific clamp on this. The first step is to take the handheld controller, plug it into the module, and introduce the MSD unit to the car it's sitting on. After all, it could be used on anything from a Hemi to a Slant 6. Well, in this case, what we do is we plug in the handheld controller to the module, turn on the ignition key, and then go through a series of questions which we answer. Cubic inches, number of cylinders, idle RPM target, and then rev limit. There are also some advanced setup screens that we can use to set the fan speeds from 160 degrees for the first one and have the second one come on at 180 degrees. There's also air fuel targets for idle, cruise, and wide open, and we can even adjust ignition timing. It's very simple. Even I can figure it out. Well, I finished the installation of the MSD Atomic EFI, checked for fuel leaks, and it fired right up. It couldn't have been easier. Eight wires, one hose. Now I'm just going to put the air cleaner on and take it for a drive. <laughs>